Jinha and I'm from the Department of Chemical Engineering. Now, which ones of you love to travel? Like me, if you, if you love to travel, you must also have a travel bucket list. In those bucket lists, you can see the places that you want to go and the wonders you would like to visit. And one of those wonders is the Great Barrier Reef. Now, as the largest living structure on the planet, the Great Barrier Reef is incredibly rich and diverse. Stretching for over 2300 kilometers, it is so big that it can even be seen from outer space. Now, it's in, in its intricate architecture, it houses millions of species of both plants and animals. And in this vast expanse, it has a unique range of ecological species, communities, and habitats. Sadly, it is in fact dying. According to Greenpeace, which is a non-profit environmental organization, over the last 30 years, we have seen it lose 50% of its coral. And that brings me to the topic of my presentation, which is the reasons why. Now, time is a constraint that does not allow me to go through all the reasons, but I will go through the two main ones, namely fossil fuels and bleaching of coal. Now, let's talk about fossil fuels. Now, firstly, we'll talk about coal. Now, this little black rock is the main threat to the very existence of the Great Barrier Reef. Now, what the craziest thing is, is that Queensland Labour Party has approved the Agamese chemical Carmichael megamine, which is said to be the largest megamine in Australia. Now, because the coal is a dying industry, it, is, it has been named as an economical disaster by the authorities. But this continues to be made and it has a carbon footprint 10 times larger than the entire city of Sydney. And this has caused an increase in the number of ships and the pollution levels, and which has caused the clownfish and the turtles to deteriorate. Now, secondly, let's talk about the US Import Export Bank, which funds international projects. Now, it has, it has uh, agreed to fund the, the production of two massive liquefied natural gas projects, which it will give to 5 billion US dollars. Now, these facilities are being built in, within the boundaries of the Na World Heritage Area of the Great Barrier Reef. Now, what this causes is that it, it has increased the, uh, the traffic of the tankers by 13% and it has caused a lot of sediment buildup, which is in turn caused the, the, the sediment buildup is in, in, turn, in turn caused the population of the endangered species to plummet and also the uh, local fishermen's catch to plummet. Now thirdly, we will talk about the carbon dioxide emissions from these fossil fuels. Now the ocean, as we know, absorbs one third of the atmospheric carbon dioxide. Now this might be good because it is decreasing the greenhouse effect, but it is detrimental for the oceans because the carbon dioxide decreases the pH of the oceans and increases the acidity. Now this increased acidity decreases the ability of the coral to absorb the calcium carbonate that they need for their exoskeletons. Now we, when we look at this picture, this is how it was in the past. The, there was a delicate system in place where the ocean absorbed carbon dioxide from the environment and it stabilized its pH. Now what ha what's happening in the present is that the carbon dioxide levels are unprecedented and this has caused the pH level to decrease and the acidity to increase. Now if the carbon dioxide emissions are to be kept like they are right now, the studies show that the pH could go as low as 7.8 by the year 2100 and this increased acidity will, will, will lead to the dissolving of the exoskeleton of the corals which will in turn make the reefs fall apart. Now the loss of the reefs is equal to the loss of vital habitat and it is up to us to curb our carbon dioxide emission so that we are not responsible for what is happening. Now this brings me to the second part of my presentation which is bleaching of the corals. Now we can see this infographic that I took from the National Oceanic and At Atmospheric Administration. Now what happens is, is that there is a symbiotic relationship between the corals and the algae. Now the algae are also the primary food source for the corals. Now with the increasing with the increasing temperatures of the oceans, this symbiotic relationship is in danger. Now what happens is that the algae will leave the tissues of the coral, which puts them into stress. This is called algae expulsion, and this leads to stress of the coral. Now this stress, in turn, leads to the whitening and the peeling of the uh, coral themselves. 
Now this bleaching themselves does not kill the corals, but it weakens them and it makes them more susceptible to disease and subject to mortality. Now up to 50% of the currently bleached coral will die if it has not been given time to recover. And reefs can survive bleaching if they, give the, if they have sufficient time to recover, but unfortunately the Great Barrier Reef has not been given a chance so far. Now if you look at an aerial view, two-thirds of the Great Barrier Reef have already been bleached. And overall, 91% of the Great Barrier Reef shows some signs of bleaching. Now, it, it doesn't take decades, it doesn't take years, it takes a mere months to go from healthy coral to bleached coral and finally dead coral. And trust me, no one likes dead coral. So this gives rise to the question, what can be done to protect the reef? Now, the regulations can be put up to uh, control the emissions that we that, that the humans are emitting because climate change is the main threat to the existence of the, the, the Great Barrier Reef and we should stand up to protect the Great Barrier Reef because if it's, if it's nothing if nothing has happened then soon there will be no reef to protect and it will be a thing of the past. Thank you for your attention. For those of you who are interested these are my references. These are my references for the images and now I will be happy to answer any questions that you might have.